Welcome everybody to the long-awaited top 10 best games of 2020. Now, I'm not doing 2021 because honestly I have not played 10 games that came out in 2021. I played some, but not all. So, to be honest, we're going to have to talk about games from the previous year. The year that was not so good. But, hey, there was a lot of good games that came out in 2020, believe it or not. So, instead of just standing here, not doing anything, let's talk about the top 10 best games of 2020. Now... I'm going to just shout myself out here. Subscribe to my main channel where I do very good shows. And subscribe to my gaming channel where you'll see me play through some of these amazing games. Now, with that all being said, let's talk about these great games that came out in a pretty bad time. Are you ready, kids? Aye, aye, Captain! I can't hear you! Aye, aye, Captain! Oh! SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom is definitely one of the best 3D platformers that came out in 2020. And I think a lot of people who played it on the Switch was definitely cheaped out, but for people who didn't play it on the Switch, I think they all had a great time with it. This game is a remake of a 2000 classic on the 4th, uh, 5th gen of console gaming. Anyways, this is possibly one of the best 3D platformers I played. With great title tracks, and yes, while not everything's remastered, they did add in a couple new things. One of which being the unused boss from... Bumbob Square Pan Battle for Bikini Bottom, which is technically the uh, Squidward boss, but it's only in the multiplayer. And the multiplayer is definitely new. I think that this game is a good remake for what it set out to do. R bring back the old GameCube classic on newer hardware without having to port it and edit some of the controls. Instead, they made it a little bit more fun in some instances. Yes, there's glitches, yes, there are bugs, but they have been patched out through patch notes. And honestly, I think this game is still one of the better games of 2021. And I highly recommend you go out and play it. It's not on Game Pass, but hey, do you know what it is on? Almost every platform known to man, even including a iOS and Android port, which, I mean, to be honest, that is pretty great. Is it the best 3D platformer out there? No, and is it going to be? Never. But, I do think that this is definitely a key title, and one of the better parts of this gloom and doom year. Puyo Puyo Tetris 2! Puyo Puyo Tetris 2 is more of the same of what we got with Puyo Puyo Tetris 1, a technical crossover between two puzzle giants, but it's not that much different than the first one, other than there's a few more characters. Sonic is actually one of them, which depending on how you feel about Sonic might make you feel how you, about the game. Anyways, this game is really fun, and obviously as a Tetris geek myself, I really like this game. But why isn't it higher? Well, because of the what I listed before. It's just more of the same Tetris action that we got. Though, it is a great game and I do recommend if you are a puzzle snob, please go out and get this amazing game. Carrion is a game where you play as a villain. Basically, it's a reverse game where you are a new project going around going and eating people. 
it's not really more of a project as you are just a big tentacle monster that goes around and eats people so then you could be stronger. You also have to solve puzzles and get through different areas and sometimes the humans might revolt. But the more humans that you eat, the more bigger you get. And heck, there's even some sound usage. The gameplay is great with this pixely art style. And lastly, I think this is definitely one of the better indie games of this year. Now, I don't remember too many games that were indie games of 2020, but this is definitely one of the best ones. And it's on Game Pass at the moment, so if you really do want to go out and play this game, it's on Game Pass right now, but you might want to shill in some of the money if you want. I mean, I didn't, but hey, don't, don't judge me. This game's great. And I highly hope more content comes out for it, as it has an expansion, though I think maybe we should get a second game sometime in the distant future. Maybe 2022 will bring us that. Super Hot Mind Control Delete is one of the lesser known games that came out in 2020. I know a lot of people might be thinking, oh, but it's a game that was technically ported to other consoles, but in my opinion, I think it deserves to still be on this list. A game where basically, if you don't know the premise, you freeze time every time you don't move, but every time you do move, and that includes if you shoot a gun or if you throw something, or if you barely move, or barely move your head, you move. And when you do move, you move everybody else. So basically, you kind of have to stop walking, stop doing whatever, and then shoot them, or do whatever you think you would need to do. Now this game is incredible by itself. Though there's actually a pretty cool story behind it that I would recommend you just playing the game so you see the story. Because I'm not spoiling it here. And also the VR version of this game is really trippy. Basically, I won't go into it much here, but watch some videos on it and then play it for yourself if you can. Though, this is one of my favorite games of 2020. And I highly recommend, if you have the time, please sit down and play through Super Hot Mind Control Delete. Animal Crossing New Horizons is the next entry in the long-awaited continuation of Animal Crossing. This is its return to home console after the flop on the Wii U, which was Animal Crossing Amiibo Festival. This is a true Animal Crossing game for the Switch, and definitely really good, though I don't think it's as good as everybody let it up to be. It was actually nominated for many awards, and does it deserve its award? Absolutely. This game was awesome, and I love every single moment of it. My only problem is the lack of content, and after a few weeks of playing, you would definitely notice the content is a little bit lackluster. But after you actually play more and more with free updates and the big expansion that came out, you would definitely love to play Animal Crossing. With your friends or by yourself, it doesn't matter. This game is, my opinion, one of the best games to play on your Switch. And yes, it is Animal Crossing still, but it's Animal Crossing New Horizons. So now we just gotta wait until there's a new version of that and a new version of that. Anyways, I love this game and I think a lot of people hate on it for a good reason. Though, it still is one of the best games to play. The atmosphere, how you can pick your own island, how you customize it, and everything, definitely makes this one of the best Nintendo Switch games, and definitely one of my favorite games of 2020.
Resident Evil 3 Remake was a good game, and still is a good game. Following up of Resident Evil 2 Remake, this game tries to do a remake of 3 and connects them both into the same universe. Unlike how Resident Evil 7 is a prequel to Resident Evil Village, this actually takes place between the events of Resident Evil 2 Remake and Resident, e and Resident Evil 3 Remake as well. They are both connected in some way. The gameplay is cool and Nemesis looks epic. I do have some problems with it. The final boss can be a little bit confusing at times, at least for me. Some of the gameplay does get a little bit annoying after a bit with the whole, oh you can dodge, but if you're playing as Chris, you can only punch. There's nothing wrong with changing up the gameplay, but if you go to try to dodge as Chris, you instead inflict a punch, but you don't hit anything. The gameplay though is solid, and the fights, oh my gosh. I know I mentioned that the last boss fight ain't my favorite, but the other boss fights are really cool. And that twist at the end, in my opinion, hopefully it sets up a Resident Evil 4 remake even though we have a Resident Evil 4 VR, I hope for a Resident Evil 4 remake that maybe continues on what this story has going on. And heck, maybe we can see a new game like Resident Evil blank. Maybe Resident Evil 9 will tie up loose ends? Only time can tell and Capcom can lead the series into a new direction. By the numbers, this is one of the best games of 2020 but a game that I feel like not many people noticed came out. I know some people played through it, but I never seen anybody even talk about this game. And that kind of saddens me. This is a really good game, and honestly, kind of shocked that it was not nominated for Game of the Year. Ah, whatever. This is still a very amazing game. Hades is a 2D roguelike game and it's hard, but it's amazing. This game was originally released in 2019, but didn't see popularity until 2020. And honestly, I'm kind of shocked about that. It feels like almost every year we at least get one good indie game that gets shine into the limelight. And I'm so glad Hades was one of the games. Hades is adorable with its art style. It's amazing. The music is like classic Odyssey-esque music. The characters are very unique and different, all referencing different types of god from Greek mythology. And just how hard it is just makes me want to go back and actually try beating some of the dungeons. Now granted, if you rage at games like me, be warned that you will rage a lot. And you will have to go back to the beginning. But if you don't mind that, Hades is a fun, enjoyable experience that I'm sure you will all enjoy. Ghost of Tsushima is one of the best games I actually ever played that I'm actually still playing through right now. I have a gameplay coming up in February if you want to go check that out when it's actually released. Basically this game follows your main character Jin and he's going to go and save his uncle while the character, the female character right there, Yuna, is trying to save her brother. This game takes place in mid, uh, not mid, but a few years before, like maybe 13,000th uh, BC, maybe? I don't remember. Uh, when the Mongolian invasions were hot on its trail. It's a few years after the gang is Khan, and actually the main villain of the gang game is a descendant from Genghis Khan. It has very good historical representation. The gameplay cinematics are beautiful. The combat is so fluid. 
I can go on and on of how much I love the game just from playing the first few, well, first hour of it. The story's great. The gameplay's great. The blood and gore is beautiful. And I adore this game. Oh, the cinematics. How this didn't win game of the year will always shock me. As this game definitely deserve it. deserves it. And guess what? This is a PlayStation 4 exclusive, with a PlayStation 5 exclusive also being out, but it's only on a PlayStation console. That just shows why you should just buy a PlayStation 4. But there is one other game that will be much later on, on this list that you would want to buy a PlayStation 4 for. But anyways, let's move on to the next game. Doom Eternal is a sequel to the 2016 Doom game, and honestly, again, this is another one of these instances of how this game did not win Game of the Year that will always complex me. The gameplay, ah, oh, is phenomenal. It always feels good when you take a chainsaw to one of the demons' necks and kill them, along with just shooting them mindlessly and then just getting at them. The gameplay is phenomenal. This is PlayStation 4 footage right here. And honestly, I want to know what the next specs would look like on like the PlayStation 5 version. Also, this game is able to run on Switch, which in my opinion is pretty amazing. Now, mind you, this is still a very amazing game, but does it hold up to Doom 2016? I don't know. Let me know down in the comments. That's what I'm just wondering from you guys. This game, again, plays great. The guns are fun. The amazing enemy designs are very fun and expressive at points. Like when you're cutting one of them open and then they're like, Whoa! It's awesome. This game definitely deserves to be on the best games of 2020. Now, before we get into number one, let's go through some honorable mentions. So, number technically 11 is the Mega Man Zero and ZX collection. Now, I did not play much of this, but it is a very nice collection for people who do like these games. It's technically just more Mega Man, and if you like Mega Man, here it is. It's really cool that the company that originally made the other Mega Man games now made another collection of this, you know, more of the unknown spinoffs and so on and so forth. And what makes it even better is just the fact that maybe we might get another one of these games, just like how we got Mega Man 11 in 2019. But, come on guys, let's really not try to hold our breaths here, because I don't think this collection did sell that well, and not many people talked about it. But hey, we never know until we try, so let's see what number 12 is. Well, number 12 isn't actually that hard to believe, it's actually Collection of Saga. So, Collection of Saga would have been my number 12 on the list. Final Fantasy Legend is a Game Boy exclusive franchise. That has now been technically redone to be on the Nintendo Switch with some more up-to-date kind of quality stuff. This is actually really cool and for three Game Boy games for 15 bucks technically it is worth the price. Way more worth the price than Super Mario 3D All-Stars but I'm getting ahead of myself. I highly recommend you play either of these two games I listed on my honorable mentions. And if you don't, I won't blame you, but there is one game I would, well, on this entire list, I recommend all 10, but for this last game, I highly recommend you to play it. Yes, my number one pick for best game of 2020 is Final Fantasy VII Remake. Not only 
can this game hold up on its own with different story elements, different gameplay, different, well, remixed music, whatever, even though it can hold up on all those fronts, this game has shown that anything is possible with the remake, really. RE2 kind of experimented with it, RE3 also did the exact same, but RE7 remake, I mean Resident Evil 7, oh my god, Final Fantasy 7 remake definitely shows that you can make any remake different and make you still want to play through the original game. I still want to play through the original Final Fantasy 7, but I want to do it while I'm playing through this to compare and contrast. Resident, I mean, Final Fantasy 7 Remake is so amazing. The characters are so much better. Heck, some people say even better than uh, Resin Final Fantasy 7, the original. And some people agree with it. And some people, of course, disagree with it. But it doesn't matter because this game is so great. Iconic scenes like Cloud looking at the Shinra Tower. The famous um, cross-dressing scene. The honeybee scene where Cloud dances with the honeybee. The Hell House fight. The beautiful connection with some characters. Kate Sis making a small little appearance. This game is so amazing. And with so much hype built around it since the PS3 tech demo. All the way up to the 2015 reveal trailer. All the way up to 2020's release. This game is still loved by millions. This game is definitely what I wanted from a Final Fantasy VII Remake. This game done so much right. Done a lot of great things and made Final Fantasy a series worth playing again. As many people would believe that, oh, Final Fantasy has changed. Final Fantasy VII Remake showed that it's still the same, and you shouldn't really be afraid of what the series has next to offer you. Final Fantasy VII Remake also does a lot of brave stuff that most remakes won't try to do, and that is change the formula so much. I only know that RE2 and RE3 Remake really done that. And RE7, I mean, Final Fantasy VII done it so well that maybe other remakes would try doing it. Maybe old classic games like Mario 64 would kind of change up how it did. Now, of course, Mario 64 DS did that, but I'm meaning more of changing up a style, changing up how you look at a game, so then maybe it could attract newer audiences. Final Fantasy VII Remake has also shown me that anything's really possible with a remake. <laughs> okay, and other than that, it did show me that I needed to get a PlayStation 4. And I honestly have to thank Square Enix and Final Fantasy VII Remake for making me want to go out and buy a PlayStation 4. Believe it or not, I did not own one until very, uh, like, fall 2020, maybe August 2020. Around that time, I did not own a PlayStation 4. I didn't really have a reason for it until I found out that Final Fantasy VII Remake was a PlayStation 4 exclusive. So, instead of having to wait till it was a PC release, on a PC that didn't even work, and a Xbox One possible release, which I didn't believe was ever going to happen, I basically went out of my way, worked for the summer, and then got a PlayStation 4. And today, I don't regret it. So many other great games, Ghost of Tsushima and Spider-Man 2018, shown me that the PlayStation 4 is really awesome. So I have to think Final Fantasy VII Remake again, because without it, I would have definitely not gotten a PlayStation 4. I probably would have just went, nah, wait till the next console generation. But this game also still gets supported today, just like Smash Ultimate. It still gets DLC to continue what the story has. And apparently there's been some rumors that Final Fantasy V might get the same treatment. And that would be cool. Honestly, I like a Final Fantasy VI remake, but hey, you know, uh, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Honestly, this game, if you have not played it yet, highly recommend you play it now. A PlayStation 5 maybe version 
whichever one you want to do, I highly just recommend that you play this game to completion. And even if you don't like Final Fantasy VII, that's fine. You don't have to like it because this game changes so much and so much other stuff hap happens in this game. So it definitely changes it up. So maybe if you don't like Final Fantasy VII, you might like the remake. And of course... There are some content missing. The Shinra Tower scene is still a little bit infamous, apparently. But, again, I have truly beaten it. But, hey, maybe I'll do it whenever Final Fantasy 15 and 6 are done. Anyway, okay, sorry. This ain't a gaming update. But, I definitely think if you want to play a Final Fantasy game that still contains true to what the original series had, Final Fantasy 7 Remake is the game. And I am so glad that it is my number one game of the year. Of 2020 at least. And also, I think that this is the reason how we got Sephiroth in Smash. I'm just saying. And also, the reason that apparently this didn't win game of the year was because it's a remake. Guess what? Screw you. Don't even nominate it if it wasn't going to win in the first place. Screw off.